You thought San Francisco was going to be doing okay, but it's getting worse every single day. Because if you go on the Google Maps page and you just check out the Golden Gate Bridge here, this is supposed to be like a very iconic area. This is supposed to be like an area where people actually go to for vacation. This is what a massive tourist destination is, right? The Golden Gate Bridge is very iconic. It's just like, for example, the Empire State Building in New York City. This is a place where international travelers go take pictures and it's pretty pretty. You know, you also got like the fog, you know, great weather. You got some beaches on the side. This is just a massive tourist hotspot. But if you look at what's going on here, the iconic Golden Gate Bridge becomes the latest doom loop victim with traffic down 30% on pre-pandemic sending the transit agency on a massive cliff. Very few people are going to San Francisco. And this is actually connected to Napa Valley. Now, this is going to be like the, I guess, good part of town. This is Wine County. You also have a lot of pretty cool places. I guess one of the last bastions of pretty decent places in the Bay Area is probably going to be this area here. You know, going to be north of the Bay Area, kind of this very area, you know, Napa Valley. This is actually a pretty good area, and it's still been kind of untouched. Housing prices are still very expensive here. But keep in mind that the transportation of people back and forth this bridge is down 30%. That's crazy because a lot of people live up here and they actually commute to work. You also have some pretty big universities here and a lot of the professors live up here and not even the professors are willing to go to San Francisco. Now, if you check out the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, it's even worse. There's a lot less cars. A lot of people are no longer traveling back and forth. And if you also look at the morning commute for the Bay Area Rapid Transit, it's also down a lot as well. So this is pretty much San Francisco's fault, right? Absolutely. I think it's San Francisco's fault. You have dirty streets. You have business owners can't even get the tents off their front area. You have so many mom and pop stores just dropping like flies at this point. The Mission District used to be this pretty big, vibrant place full of bars and restaurants and people is now super empty. 200,000 office workers are no longer commuting to work to the Bay Area. The Bay Area, you know, San Francisco, it's so dead. I mean, when you lose like 100,000 to 200,000 office workers in such a small little city, this city is so screwed. This is why real estate prices are so low right now. And yes, you're probably looking at Zillow thinking, wow, it's still pretty crazy, expensive. But just give it a little bit over time. And if you offer them below the asking price, many of them will probably say yes. And it's getting worse. Now, if you check out some of these videos here, I mean, not even delivery robots could catch a break. Even delivery robots are under attack by the San Francisco homeless. And like I said before, the city is now going broke. They're literally going broke. So if you want to help these people, you can't even help these people simply because you don't have money. They're running out of budget deficit. With so many companies, startups, big corporations, and also commercial real estate companies, leaving this area it's just gonna get worse every single day the city is going broke and they may have to borrow a couple billion dollars from the federal government and you know even a lot of people you know on tiktok are saying that just getting groceries they got spit on i mean san francisco is probably not the best place to be doing any sort of living i mean a lot of people are getting pretty nervous people are just slowly leaving i mean it's getting worse and worse for a lot of people and people are kind of pretty scared to leave San Francisco. And this is one of the examples that lady that you saw. Yeah, it's actually pretty scary to leave San Francisco. So how are these people going to be commuting to San Francisco for work? So many of them are afraid. They're much rather just work at home. I mean, people who live in like, for example, you know, Redwood City, Palo Alto, Mountain View, they're pretty good areas. They are refusing to go to work in San Francisco. They much rather just work from home in this area. People who live up here, okay, they have to commute to work to San Francisco. They used to go to Gate Bridge, and now they no longer go to San Francisco. It's such a bad, crazy area. They're like, yeah, why would I ever go to San Francisco? And that's exactly what I'm saying. San Francisco is struggling with hotel and tourism comeback. Guys, the city has truly failed. I mean, at this point, they should just focus on cleaning up the streets. They're doing all these little gimmicky things like ad campaigns offering $50,000 for new business owners, and even offering business owners extra money to expand their businesses in the city, and also even hiring somebody to do advertisements for vacant office spaces. God, like, seriously, sc like, screw all the gimmicky things. Just clean up the streets, 
okay? Make the streets crystal clean. You know, there's no homeless camps. And there's actually very good systems where you can help people who are in need. And the place is safe. You know, none of this crazy stuff on the street. I guarantee you everyone's coming back, okay? Even without the advertisements. A lot of people don't want to leave San Francisco. They like the city and get why. I visited pre-pandemic in 2019. It was actually a pretty dope place. Had its problems, but it was mostly centered around the Tenderloin District. And the nightlife was pretty great in a lot of the downtown areas in the Mission. But now it's getting worse because nobody wants to go here. When it's no longer the Tenderloin District, it's like Union Square is kind of like this. The Civic Center is kind of like this. And now it's kind of sprinkled out throughout the whole entire city. This is why when we tell people I'm going to San Francisco for vacation, they all recoil in disgust. And check this out. Look at how empty this is, guys. This is super duper empty. There are no shops open. This is Pal Street. This is supposed to be the street where a lot of people are walking around and shopping. This is dystopian right here. You're not supposed to see this many empty streets in a daytime area. And look at look look at this. There's barely any traffic. There's barely any people on the street. Those stores are empty. This is like not normal. This is like crazy empty when you think about it. Because most cities and their popular streets are usually filled to the brink with storefronts. And those storefronts, the places above them, are probably super empty as well. Even like this white building here, this very nice, luxurious building, is also completely vacant. We're seeing record shoplifting in San Francisco. So I kind of see why a lot of these businesses are rather closed down. And they continue operating their business in this city. And it really sucks for a lot of people who live here. And by the way, the morning commute is completely empty as well. I mean, this video just could tell you easily what's going on. You know, Monday in the morning, everyone's supposed to get themselves on a train and go to downtown San Francisco and look at how empty this is. It used to be packed with a bunch of people. The buses used to be packed. The subways used to be packed. Where is everyone, right? And it's kind of scary. A lot of people are actually moving out of San Francisco. They're moving themselves online and companies are willing to move online as well. Even with the most loyal guys like Airbnb, they pretty much only have one office now. They used to have several offices around at 888 Brandon Street. But now this area is kind of like their last bastion. This is like the last Airbnb headquarters. They're moving out, okay? Airbnb is actually moving out most of their offices around this area, and they're pretty much getting all their employees online or concentrating in one single building. We're actually seeing Facebook, for example, also leaving a massive vacant spot in 181 Fremont Street, this massive skyscraper, okay? They used to rent like almost 500,000 square feet of office space for this building, and now it's like all empty. Now that is crazy, right? The Salesforce building is mostly empty. The Slack building is mostly empty. It's just a lot of emptiness in the city. And I kind of see why. And it sucks because this is a pretty dope city. But if they never fix it, I'll probably never go visit.